PTV Rosalind Lester. I'm Hector Galliano. I'm Aiden Wayne. I'm PTV's Charity Hart. I'm Eo Gifford. Welcome back to PTV at PHS. Today is Thursday, March 4th, 2021. I'm PTV's Tyler Ritchie. Topping our show today on a somber note, you might have heard over the weekend that the former Notre Dame and NFL nose tackle, Louis Nix III, was reported missing in his home state of Florida and was found dead when police found his vehicle in a retention pond near his house. Nix talked to our PTV crew back in the November of 2018 when we ran into him on the field at a Notre Dame game. Police are still looking into what may have led Nix to ending up in his pond. The 29-year-old was last seen coming home from his dad's house this midweek. Our thoughts and prayers go out to Notre Dame and Nix's family as they deal with this tragic loss. Now on to the fate of our CTE radio TV program. It has just been over a week and a half since we learned that the radio TV dual credit CTE hour-long course is not being offered next school year. Since that time, former PTV alumni, students and parents have contacted us asking if there is a petition they can sign or anything they can do to help save the program for next school year. We appreciate everyone's concerns. We did reach out to the PHS administration to see if we could still possibly continue a club during advisory. Mr. Martin did inform us that the school board deadline to approve clubs for next year was last month. However, Mr. Martin is checking into what are options. Again, we just found out that the radio and TV program would no longer exist on February 22nd. As always in public education, if you want to voice your opinion about something, parents, current students, past students, or taxpayers can always contact the school board members directly and voice their concern. We compiled a list of the school board members' names, which can be found on your screen. At this point, we do not have an active petition to bring back the program. Although, in the future, if there continues to be inquiries, we may. Now on to our COVID update. There is great news to report. Marshall County is now in the blue color category, ranked by the Indiana Department of Health as one of the lowest COVID positive counties in the Hoosier State. But Marshall County isn't alone. Nearby Fulton, Elkhart, and Coskill counties are also coded blue. As of today, more than over 5,000 positive cases have been reported in Marshall County since the pandemic started as of last March. The Federal Emergency Management Agency, or better known as the FEMA, is committed to actively involving youth in preparedness-related activities through the Youth Preparedness Council, or YPC, and they are seeking applicants for 2021. YPC members are students in grades 8 through 12 who are selected to support disaster preparedness and make a positive impact on their communities. The 2021 Youth Preparedness Council is now open for applications. The YPC is an opportunity for young leaders to engage with FEMA and provide their perspectives, feedback, and opinions related to preparedness to grow their leadership skills and to support the resilience of their communities. YPC members are selected for two-year terms and are cho chosen based on their passion for preparedness, their involvement in the community, and their aptitude for working as a team and as a leader. The application opened on January 18th and students must complete the applications by March 7th at 11.59 p.m. to be considered. Just visit our Facebook page at PTV at PHS if you would like to apply where we just posted the material yesterday. The PHS History Department is pleased to announce their third adventurous pilgrim travel plans are a go for 2022. Mrs. Falstich and Mr. Wolf are excited to be able to plan a student trip to England, France, and the Netherlands in the July of next year. There was a virtual call-out meeting last Friday for 9th and 10th grade students interested in learning more. If you missed the meeting, tonight at 7 p.m., the super serious online informational meeting takes place. That's when Melissa Falstich and Ryan Wolf will go over the dates and the cost of the trip. The meeting also marks the official opening for the enrollment of the trip. All attending the meeting were supposed to RSVP by yesterday to be given the meeting link. But it's worth a shot to email directly both teachers if you and your family missed most of these major deadlines to see if you can still take part in the adventurous pilgrim's travel plans to Europe for 2022. Are you into country music or just want to find out how to break into the music business scene? Either way, this next story might be right up your alley. The Center for Performing Arts in Indy this school year has been holding virtual front seat session with professionals and seven lucky students from across the state who are chosen to be in the front row virtually and talk with artists live. The last artist for the school year is country music musician and composer Adam Olin Dorf. Adam will answer students' questions about the recording industry, composing music, working with notable stars, his education, career, and other areas about which you might have questions about. Alan Dwarf has shared stages with Loretta Lynn, Willie Nelson, and Katy Perry, and appeared on CMA Awards, the Grammy Awards, and The Tonight Show with Jimmy Fallon. The Big Night is Monday, March 29th at 7 p.m. 
Last month, our very own PHS sophomore, Tyler Steger, was picked out to be one of the students in the front seat. Email broadcasting teacher Judy Likowski was stopped by our PTV studio located in the varsity gym during advisory, and she will get you all in the info if you are interested. Last night, the Plymouth Pilgrims boys basketball team wrapped up their season in Michigan City during the sectional game. Plymouth took on the Adams Eagles, who were coming into the contest 5th and 4A in the state. The competition was fierce enough to end the season for Coach Bales and our Pilgrims. Nevertheless, we would like to pay our tribute to the to two PHS seniors on the team, Cameron Reidner and Owen Yoder. And a real quick shout out to WSOI sophomore Fitz Holm, who is a proud member of the Plymouth Sharks Swim Club. The 17-year-old has impressively qualified to compete in the divisional swim meet this weekend at Northridge in the 200 backstroke, 50 freestyle, 200 freestyle, 100 backstroke, and 100 freestyle. Good luck! While the fast food industry continues to evolve, McDonald's hit the rewind button to bring back an iconic beverage based by consumers' demand. Mickey D's is bringing back the high sea lava burst after a four-year hiatus from its menus. Throughout the next few months, select locations across the U.S. Will, will be receiving the high sea orange beverage, but it will officially be a nationwide option starting this June. The sweet orange flavored drink has been recognized as a staple on the McDonald's menu making its debut in the 1960s. It is uncertain when the Plymouth McDonald's will receive high sea lava burst, but we did some digging and we found that the nearest McDonald's that currently serves it is in Walkerton. Well, that's a wrap of our show this week. Catch us right back here, same time and same place. I wear a mask so we can be together. I wear a mask for my community. I wear a mask to protect me. I wear a mask to stop the spread of COVID-19. I wear a mask for those who can't. I wear my mask to make a difference. I wear a mask for my son. I wear a mask because it's the least I can do. I wear a mask for those at risk. I wear my mask for my husband. I mask up for my students. I wear a mask to be able to teach. I wear a mask because I'm masked too. I wear a mask to protect others. I wear a mask to protect you. I wear a mask for my community.